Okay, I'll continue with the UEFI developments here. I got a couple of things that I changed, really just new lines for printing, but I'll go with what those are, I guess, just to say I <laughs> changed them a little bit. I tested this on my laptop and I had to change printing for some of these boot variables, and I'll probably make another change or two in here for that. But as far as printing output, I just added a new line at the start when I print each variable, so they all go on their own line with a new line to start off there. And the values for boot order, I'm getting rid of the uint x here and just printing everything is, you know, 0x0001, comma, 0x0002, comma, you know, so on and so forth. Thought it looked slightly better. For the boot option support, it's just a uint32, and instead of two lines, I'm just doing one line. For, se for some of these things that aren't just boot options, aren't load options, like the boot 00012, whatever, I'm just putting the ones without that, the ones with single uint values, I'm just putting them as like a single line separated. So they're each on their own line, but they're not, they don't have a gap in between. So that just fit a little bit more on screen. It's kind of my main logic for these. So instead of two new lines after I'm putting one, just to save some of the lines and get more info on the screen at once. It's pretty much all I'm doing there. This thing though, for checking if something is a hex digit, for if it's a, a boot and four hexadecimal digits, that was catching some things on, um, it was catching boot current, if I didn't put this up here, but also it's catching some other random boot named variables that I had on hardware. So just to doubly make sure we're only using the boot and four hexadecimal digits, that is, um, the, the size would be 18 with the two null characters or the one char 16 null on the end of boot and four hex digits, because that's eight characters times two for char 16. And then with a null byte would be another two bytes, so 18 there. And that just helped catch a few cases where I was trying to print load options. And on hardware, I would get a soft lock and I'd have to turn it off or restart to get past that. And it wasn't for an actual load option variable. So that's just kind of a bug fix for that there. I don't have a good string match function. So that's the best I'm, I have at the moment. And then instead of printing the word description, I'm just printing description. And this would be on the current line for the load option instead of being on the line underneath because I'm printing the name out on its own line here. So right after the name for a load option, it'll just print the description right next to it. Um, and then at the end, I have a go to next. I added a next label, I think. So after printing the device path, the optional data, all that stuff, instead of printing a new line here, I'm printing it for everything else. If it's unhandled, it'll add a space. If it is handled, it'll just, you know, not print an extra space like it was before with here. And that's all I'm doing there. So that prevents printing an extra space out so I can fit more stuff on screen. So what those changes sort of culminate into is that it looks like this now, so boot option support and boot current, et cetera, have the, the value on the same line, and the load options have the description on the same line. I just think that looks a little more, you know, it's a little more concise and fits more stuff on screen. And the boot order looks a little bit better for the, these being separated values there. So, you know, one, two, zero, that still changes. Boot next, we'll just say two, boot next is there that has an extra line that it doesn't need because I print a new line before the variable but other than that it's okay so I can probably get rid of that under boot order as well maybe just one line there because they'll print another line before each name anyway that would look a little better so I didn't even catch everything but yeah <laughs> just for example there we go so boot next looks a little better okay Anyway, just random stuff there for that. So on the to-do list, uh, fix printing a couple other things and I'll refactor printf yet again because I keep thinking of better ways to make it better. <laughs> so better ways to make it better. Um, skip if data size is zero. Some things I don't want to print info out if they don't have any data, so I should do that. Non-boot number variables one per line. I am doing that. I don't know if I'm handling data size being zero, however. So let me check if I get a boot option, at least specifically, I guess I'm not checking if that is the case or a variable regardless. 
I'm allocating a pool with data size. I guess if it's zero after this point, I can just leave. Right, I'll just do that or iterate or go on or something. I'll probably just go to go to next, right? Because that'll go to, that goes to free the data pool. That goes to get the next name. I don't really know, actually. If we get it and it's okay, I can probably just go to next. Which will get the next variable name afterwards. So that would probably be okay. Yeah, I'll do that. That's reasonable. I mean, we'll get it, and if we allocate it a zero byte buffer, that will that would still be okay. <laughs> I'll just, um, I'll just go on from there. I don't know if this would ever come up, but maybe it will if we have some odd things in firmware for these global variables. And that'll still, yeah, that'll still free the data pool, so that'll be all right. Okay, so vprintf, since I forgot and didn't read up on things, there is actually the vfprintf, right, which prints to its own character stream. <laughs> so one change I want to make is probably just call that and not need a global printfc out variable. So I can change to do that. Because that makes a lot more sense, just pass it as an input parm to a vfprintf function. So I'll do that. And this will take in a... Well, instead of a file stream like in C, we have these output protocols. So I'll just take this in. A simple output protocol, just call it C out here is fine. Well, that's the name C out. Um, I don't know, I can call it stream. If it makes more sense as like a file stream, that's that's fine. So we'll call it that, which means I'll have to change where vprintf is called is called from so vf printf for regular printf will just print to c out and from error instead of v printf we'll call vf printf and print c error right so that seems all right so then inside of here wherever i'm printing with like the printf c out i'll just print to the input parm which is stream which is not in too many places, but probably in a decent number of places. Yeah, we'll just change that to stream. So that'll be C out or C error that's passed in. And then I don't have to worry about that global sort of variable for printfc out. Shouldn't have to worry about that. And I shouldn't have to worry about setting it anywhere. Printfc out. This needs to be stream, so I probably have to pass that into here, which is fine. I'll do that. Pass that as another, a new parm to print number. That's okay. Just so it doesn't have to be global, we can just pass it and have better scoping and, and other things with that. Okay. Mm, type name, did you mean simple text output protocol? Yes. What did I... Oh, I took off the U from U into N. Expected call, yep. So print number, all right. So let's pass in the stream, wherever I call that. And print FC out, I don't need to do. Because we're just handling that here. So print F, we'll call it with C out, so that's okay. And let me change where I'm calling print number everywhere, just right there. Okay, there we go. So everything should still print, such as I like to check with the ACPI tables for different printing formats. You know, that still prints. We're good there. If I print an error, say, at the start of stuff here, I am sufficiently caffeinated if I'm... Hopefully I'm not moving, like, super fast, but... <laughs> I am sufficiently caffeinated right now, so. We don't have device error, do we? Hmm. Thought I had these things defined. If I error, yes. So that's if, if I'm moving fast. That's why. Hopefully it's not too scatterbrained today. 
We'll just do not found. I'll print error test again, like 42 or something here. Just a little test for errors. Incompatible pointer types, that's fine. File, line, function, that'll print status E, if I not found. What does it not like? Incompatible pointer types, yes, because I need a U there. For the 16-bit, okay. So it looks like that, so it all works. Status E, <laughs> which is probably not great. That's 14. Should be status E if I not found. So it passes it with file line function and VA args. Oh, and then a status. Yeah, so we should pass status first. Okay, why is that not working? That is a status. Interesting. And status would be the status here. Let's do a long version of that because the status code is going to be at least that many. I'll put a alternate flag there to print the 0x as well. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it was printing E instead of 8E. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> it was actually printing the right thing. I just didn't, you know, do the full thing to tell it to print that much. All right. That makes sense. Use the proper formatted strings because it's not a compiler built in and you have to handle that on your own. But that's okay. So use the vfprintf sort of version there. All right. So to add in like a, the blanks and justification for padding and stuff, I think I will actually have to add a buffer, which may be a global, a global buffer, another global variable, just like 1k is probably fine for each format string. So I was trying to think of an easy-ish way to do this and work with left or right justification if I wanted it for printing. And I'm also testing, this is a sort of testing ground for my 32-bit OS that I was working on forever ago. And I wanted to fix up printf and that eventually for other things like printing, you know, directory output or something with info. Because these things are going to be, you know, it right justified by default, but they'll take up a certain width and they'll be, you know, consistent on each line left or right justified with different fields. So to be able to do that, I need to add, you know, those flags and processing for those. And I'll probably have to have a buffer if something is right justified by default, it'd be padded on the left with blanks, and you'll either have to pre-calculate how big the string or number is going to be if you can, or you have to print to a temporary buffer, and then print the padding first, and then that temporary buffer, that, you know, buffer contents for the formatted string. Otherwise, you'll have to print the string and then the padding on the right if it's left justified with the, the minus flag, right? Or left pad with zeros if you put the zero which is overridden by the minus flag or with precision for numbers because precision's going to zero pad and uh, the left justifies says it'll print with blanks and not zeros. So that's why the zero is overridden by that flag. But anyway, I'll add those in as, as other flag characters. I want to add a variable for a padding character, quote unquote, for a space or a zero, depending if they put the space or the zero for the flag and the minus to justify left to right. And then I need to keep track of this new buffer, so I figure another variable like a num printed that I'm currently using or change that to be sort of a buffer index or length uh, semantically variable. And I can pass that to print number, and every time we print a character or a digit, we'll increment that. And then at the end, if we're less than the minimum field width, and it's the default right justification for the field text, I'll print the amount that we still need um, of padding characters to pad out to that minimum width according if they pass that with the format string, and then I'll print the buffer contents. Otherwise, if we put the minus flag and it's left justified, then we'd print the buffer, and then we'd print the padding to go out to the minimum field width if necessary. Or maybe the max in some situations too, but definitely the min. Well, the mat, no, we wouldn't need to do the max. We just have to pad out to the min, because if it's greater than that, then, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh... Okay, so I think that, that shouldn't take too long there. I figured that was the easiest way to handle left justification in these flags. So I'll work on that. 
And again, I guess like last video, <laughs> hopefully this one's not like three or four hours again, but uh, if it's boring or you don't like it, you can skip ahead, of course, with timestamps or whatever to the stuff that isn't just messing with printing. So I can put a buffer on the stack, which I'm not sure would be great, but we can have a character 16, you know, buffer here. Say it's 1024 or something. This will be format string buffer for percent strings or whatever. Sometimes I'll get like a stack check or something if I use too much, but that looks all right. Let me get rid of that error that I had before as well. The debugging text. Okay, and I'll have a uint in, let's say buff length or index or something. And this I want to make null terminated because I'm going to, well, I don't need to do it here. By null terminated, I mean the string will be, but I probably want to clear it out regardless. Right, we'll initialize the buffer. Which will be buff, I'll just do memset, buff zero, size of buff. And that'll be all right. So unused buff index will do zero. And I can probably use that as the num printed here. Okay, so the, the minimum field width that I get, like here, that is the amount of characters to print in a sort of field that this format string is going into. That's different from the precision and that the precision is the minimum amount of characters for a string that you want to print from that string or the maximum amount of digits you want to print for a number. But that number or string, no matter how many digits or characters you print, is within a sort of field as an abstract concept. And that field, uh, the width of that is defined by this minimum field width at a minimum. At a maximum, you can go greater than this, but at a minimum, it should be the size if it's defined. So within that size, you're also printing a given number of characters for, for the string or the number. But those are two different things, so it took me a while to, to figure that out because the, the documentation doesn't really specify that too much. Um, we can have one or more flags, so I'll just have a, a little loop here for the flags. Instead of an if check, we can make it a, a case or something instead of ifs. We'll do that. We'll have a break, let's say, default. I like things being indented more, but that's just me being weird. Default will probably leave the loop because there's no more flags. So, which is, um, hmm. I guess I could do continue and just break at the end if there's nothing there, right? No more flags, I'll just do that. And this is an RPG, it's continue, not iter. That'll continue going up here. Or we can just break and then break out of the loop. Yeah, that'd probably be a little bit better. Okay. So zero would be zero padding. Let's say we have a, a padding character. So padding char, let's say, is going to be the zero instead of the space. I'll make that a char 16, probably. And we'll just default it to null. So this will be a usually just a zero or space, depending on flags. And minimum field width. Well, I should make it a space by default, probably. Yeah, because it, it will only print one of those two things. Then maybe it could be an enum instead of a char, whatever. Yeah, I'll just go with this. So we'll set the padding character to zero, so zero. Zero pad numbers on the left, unless this or precision is also defined. Okay. We can do I plus plus here to automatically increment, and it'll be okay when we go on, because if we go on, it would still check that. Well, if that's not true, we don't have any flags. Nope, never mind. I'll just iterate in all of these. Copy that. That'll be okay. So I know a space is one. 
I'm just going to put to do there and not handle that right now. <laughs> and we have a minus, which is going to be left justify. Maybe I can have a bool for that. Say left justify text from minus flag instead of default right justify. That's probably reasonable. We'll set that to true. And I don't know what the other thing would be. What flags do we have? We have the hash, zero, minus, space, and a plus, which I'm not handling, but that's all right. And other ones that GNU defines, but that's okay. All right. So that'd be those. If there's no more flags, we'll break and leave. So let's see if stuff still works by default. Set but not used is fine. Just want to make sure stuff still prints. By default, like the boot variables, you know, stuff still prints in different formats. So we're good there. Okay, so I have a buffer. I want to print to the buffer. If we have a format string, else I'll just write to standard C out. And I want to increment the index probably instead of this uh, num printed variable there. Because then I would determine what's printed and pad it on the end if it's less than the minimum width, if that's specified. Okay, or if to precision and, and the other stuff. So. I don't, I'm not doing it here because we're just doing a, a C and that is fine. So instead of printing to the string here, the stream, I want to do that at the end and I'll print to the buffer instead. So the buffer, buff index, and the buffer again is a char 16 T buffer. That can equal the char string, which is just going to be this singular character here, char string zero. That'll be all right. And then that'd be a similar thing here for a string, char string zero instead of printing the output string. We'll just add it to the buffer and the index will be added plus one. If it equals the precision will break, that's fair probably. Stop printing at the max characters for this. Well, we might need printed then for the singular string. Then the index would go until the other one. Uh, I'm trying to think. Do we need to have separate counters? Because the whole field, the string will be part of the field. Yeah, because the minimum width doesn't is, is separate from the precision. So we probably do need both actually, which is not great. But we don't need it for like characters and such. Or numbers or strings. Yeah, we don't need it for characters. It's always only going to be one. Which is fine for strings. We will have to keep track of that. I can just do that. Pre-increment. And if it's less than the minimum, I'm going to do the minimum later and not do that. And we'll do a similar thing here. Just add it there. And I'm printed plus plus. We can just do plus plus there to handle that. And we don't need to do this here. We can do it at the end after printing everything out. Instead of doing the alternate form here, I can add that to the buffer. Which I'd have to add both characters at once, that's fine. Hmm. 
This would be 0v for binary, that was 0x for hexadecimal, and we'll have 0o for octal. The invalid specifier, probably just add here, format i, because that's going to be char string 0, then we'll add a new line. So that'll be okay. Uh, or I could just directly output it, which is what I'm doing. Yeah, I'll just directly output it instead of writing it to the buffer. That was already working. If it's numeric and I'm printing a number, I probably want to pass in the buff index here. So I got a lot of harms going on with print number, but that's okay. If it's just the next character, I'll just print it directly to the stream. That's okay. This was for numeric. All right. Print padding, depending on flags, zero or space, and left, right, justify. And print buffer contents for formatted conversion string, however you want to say it. All right, so print number, I'm taking in the buffer index now. So let me, <laughs> probably too many parameters going to this thing, but that's all right. We, we would also have to pass the buffer in if I do it this way and hope that it doesn't overrun 1024. So hope that it doesn't overrun 1000, which is the max plus 24 with this plus one is the null byte that could be on there. Not great. But that's all right. We'll pass the buffer in and that, which has its own buffer, which I'm printing stuff in. And then I'm reversing the buffer. And then instead of printing it here, I want to add that to the, the right buffer that's passed in. So passing in buff is awkward with the other, the other thing named buffer, but that's a local buffer, not the global sort of print buffer. Okay, so instead of doing this here, we'll add number string to buffer. Um, I can do a loop here, maybe. Is it char 16 for this buffer? Yeah, char 16, 24. So while star p, we'll just add it here. So buff index plus plus, that's just a number. I need to pass in a pointer to that so that we keep the same value. I have to pass in state. I'm not doing that anywhere else. Okay. So I want to take the value there and then I can increment after, or I think I can do this. That won't do it. Let me just do it in two steps to not make mistakes. This will be P. Okay. Uh, buffer for printing. All right, so we'll go through until we hit the null byte, which I add here. So we go from the start until it hits the null byte. It'll add all those characters to the input buffer and then increment the index for every character it adds. And that'll increment that pointer, so that should be okay. All right, so after that, we need to take whatever the index value is, depending on left or right justifying. So I'll say if left justify is not the default. So if we left justify, we'll have to print blanks on the right. Print buffer and then blanks up until the minimum field width. Say buffer contents 
and then blanks up into the minimum field width for buffer index if the for index is less. All right, I'll just do for padding. That'll make more sense. So we'll do the output stream, printing to the stream, but we will print the buffer. So if it doesn't end with a null, I should end it with a null just in case. So let's do that. Because it would have been plus plus from this. So it, it would always end with buffer index pointing to the next space to input. I'll terminate buffer string. Okay. So we'll print the buffer here, which would be buff. Yeah, then I'll say while buff index is less than the minimum field width. I don't know if I should subtract one from the index or not. So if we want to print 10 total and we printed a string of eight, we'll say index here, buff index would be eight. So I'd need to print plus one plus two. Yeah, that should be okay. Two extra, two extra spaces. That should be all right. So while it's less than the width, we'll just print out a space here for left just to find. Padding on the right with spaces, not zeros ever. So just spaces. So I'll do that. Or I could, I could even do recursion and just print like this, right? I could even do that, but no, I'll do, I'll do this. That's fine. And just to make sure, I'll null terminate that, okay. And then we'll just print that, all right. So else it's right justified, default, right justified, print padding first and then buffer contents. And print, okay. So padding first would be this. It would print the padding character, not a space. Let me do that. Because that's going to be a zero if it's a zero. Else it's going to be a space by default. Unless we override this for a number or whatever. Um, hmm. I could say if left just, if padding character is zero and left justify, then don't do a zero or precision. Okay. So let's say, I'll do that first. Let's say if padding character is a zero and left justify or precision is above zero, then we ignore the zero and don't do it. I'll just set it to a space. Yeah, I'll do that. Because that's how the, the flags are defined. If there's a zero and left justify, zero is, let's say, overwritten or overruled. by these two, so we'll do that. I mean, I'm not doing zero for numbers anyway, but I'm just saying. I'll do it that way, okay. So I'll put the padding character. I'll add it there. Okay, so if left justify, we'll do the padding there. Else we'll do the padding first, and then we'll do the buffer contents. Okay, that seems reasonable. So if, if the minimum width is zero, that'll never go off. If it's greater than or equal, it'll never go off. It only prints if it's less than up until the minimum. I think that's how it should be. Expression result unused, 142. Oh, is the stream here? And print number. 
Oh yeah, because I'm just adding to the buffer. I don't have to use that. That's true. That's true. Thank you, compiler. This is unused. Well, I want to increment the, the data at this value. Isn't that how I do that? If I do that, okay, that works. <laughs> that may be a little bit easier to understand. Take the address with ampersand. Yep, need that to be a pointer. Logical op parentheses, yes, okay. Finding character zero and left justify or precision greater than zero, we'll do that. Okay, and it should still print out everything you know, reasonably, because I'm not using the left and right justification. But that ensures that hopefully it's supported now. It does print out buffer contents, so I know that this is reasonably working because it prints a number and this seems to work. Is it this, maybe? If I do that, that dereferences and does a plus plus. I don't know, I'm going to leave it as plus equal one because it works. <laughs> Okay, so let's test maybe some printing there. So how do I want to do this? Let's say it's right justified by default with padding. So I print, let's say print test. And that'll just print a test. That'll left justify it to print spaces on the right. Otherwise, it'll print spaces on the left. So let's print on the left up to eight characters. So percent eight S. That should print four spaces and then test. For as an example. And it doesn't, it just prints that. Okay. It actually breaks, which is wonderful. What did, what did I expect would happen, really? String, which should print four blanks. Oh, I'm never I'm never incrementing this. Okay, yeah, I'm stupid. My bad. <laughs> uh, you gotta increment that, dummy. Otherwise, that's an infinite loop. Hey, good thing it's not in prod, right? Huh? Good thing we don't crash production. Yeah, that would make more sense. Okay, there we go. Well, that was too small to see. I could take in two keys so I can press Control F, but yeah, there's four spaces and then test. <laughs> okay, so if I do left justify, that should print test and then four spaces. And it does. All right. I know I'm not testing the zero padding for a number, but I just wanted the, the justification and printing from a buffer to work. I kind of want to test with the numbers like off screen to have actual test cases where I'm thinking more clearly for that. But I really just wanted the justification to work. That was my justification <laughs> for, uh, for these changes. That was easier than I thought it would be. All right, so I had in, I had an issue opened up in an email for a uh, a person whose mouse didn't work or the the simple pointer protocol or absolute pointer protocol was not sort of getting initialized on boot on their hardware in certain situations so if it automatically booted it was not working or it was not finding any simple pointer protocols but if they chose it from the bios boot menu from what i understand it did work and initialize so I, I haven't run into that on my hardware so i'm not sure how to diagnose and and reproduce and, and fix that but I did see in the UEFI spec that under connect controller, they had an example for connecting everything. And this function is supposed to be for connecting drivers. So I'm just going to add that to the start of our EFI main and assume that hopefully it fixes some things if, if drivers were sort of configured, but not connected or not initialized all the way for certain things, which I think would handle this problem maybe other things that could come up that are a little buggy maybe it'll fix those i'm not sure 
Unfortunately, every device has different firmware implementations and they might work differently. That's the nature of the beast there, but I can at least go through and add that, I think, which means I need to add, or I need to get the documentation, which I need, I think this is the errata one, yep. And the last time I had it opened was for Connect Controller, so, you know, that's fun. <laughs> So I'll add that, so let's move that over. Uh, probably zoom out a little bit. Okay, so Boot Services Connect Controller, that's in section 7312. And it's for Boot Services, which I think I have here. Yeah, Connect and Disconnect. I don't need to use Disconnect unless I'm writing like drivers, but Connect Controller I can call, so I'll add that. If I connect controller, and we'll add that under the set watchdog timer, I'll add it under there. And this is my errata A version, this is in 7.3.12, and I'll grab this. What are there, pal? Boolean recursive, ooh, that's dangerous. Recursion in my firmware? It's more likely than you think. So we give it the handle, which is the controller or handle, like the image handle for a device, like um, a hard drive or, my, or a mouse or keyboard or whatever some abstract thing that says, I have this device and I want drivers to work for it. So we need to connect drivers to these controllers for these devices and this facilitates that function. The driver image handle could be null, terminated by a null handle value. So an ordered list of handles. Okay, supporting driver binding protocol, which means you can bind drivers to that handle. We can give it a list and a null at the end and it'll connect things to everything up until the null handle. That makes sense. It's an array, like a handle buffer. I'll, I will probably send null. The remaining device path, if you pass a partial device path, which is made up of those device path nodes um, corresponding to a, a device. For a child of the controller handle controller, so everything in the device path under that controller handle will have drivers connected. And recursive will go more than one layer deep and go to controllers under that controller and under that controller, so on and so forth. If false, it'll only expand one level, else it'll get the entire tree. Okay. If it's null, invalid parameters returned. If there are no driver binding protocols, then it can't find it. If it's out of resources, we can't do it, which would be bad. Security violations. Overrides. I'm not writing UEFI drivers necessarily, so you can look into that because I haven't messed with it. But they do have an example for connecting everything recursively, which is what I'm going to do. <laughs> so you can return every handle for locate handle buffer given the all handles sort of parm there. And then we can just check while it's good. We'll just grab everything and do that. So I will do that. I'll do it after the watchdog timer, after we set the colors, resetting. They should be connected on reset, I figure, and the timer. So I'll do it probably beforehand here. So we'll just say connect all controllers found for all handles to say hopefully fix any bugs related to not initializing drivers. I don't know. <laughs> From firmware. I don't know. Not a great explanation, but we'll, uh, we'll go with that. So I may have to add more parameters, but that's fine. Uh, let's say code taken from UEFI spec 210 errata A Example, well, I guess, I oh, didn't mean to do whatever I did there, but it does look okay. Let's zoom in a little bit. Section 7312, uh, examples, I'll just say, that's fine.
So I want to do locate handle buffer. If it's not an error, then for everything, we'll call that and we'll free the pool after doing that. Okay, so we need stuff for that, which has the parameters. So do I not have EFI sort of status in here yet? Maybe I do below or not. Maybe I don't worry about it. <laughs> That's fine. Boot services is fine. I can set that equal to our, our boot service variable. Handle buffer should, these things should be initialized, but I'll just set them to null and zero and zero. I'll just get it more on one line here because I can. Put that over. So if not EFI error, then we have this. Connect everything. Free pool. All right. So we'll do that. I don't need the GBS if I'm using my boot services. So I'll just do that. Okay. I'll say adapted from there. In device path protocol does not know it. It doesn't know it. Unknown type name. I don't have device path protocol defined. I thought I did. I do right there. EFI device underscore path underscore pro. Oh, is that before? That's at 919. Yeah, that's why. Did that at 749. Okay. Okay. And yep, that's undeclared. All right. It may take a little bit more of a second uh, to initially load on emulation. Doesn't really change anything because there's probably not many devices to load, but you know, on hardware, maybe there will be. And maybe your mouse works better or not. I couldn't find any APP and I had an error in test mouse. That's good. Yeah, that's true because I didn't have any. Um, Absolute pointer protocol, because I'm using a BIOS with just simple pointer protocol. And my mouse still works in here. I don't know if that'll work for other people or not, and I know my printing is off here. So that probably needs to be fixed, but oh well. Oh well. <laughs> Hopefully that fixes issues, I don't know. I feel like that's not a bad thing to do regardless, to just sort of make sure everything's initialized first, and driver's connected, and that's probably not a bad thing. So hopefully it works out and doesn't break anybody's machine, including mine, but it shouldn't. Okay, so then the, the remaining tasks or the actual meat and potatoes of this video are going to be writing to a given disk image and then installing and, you know, rebooting for that and other stuff in the future. So let's get to those. Uh, let me get some water and I'll be back in a second. All right, I'm back. By water break, I meant get water and then realize you're hungry and get food and then realize you want a coffee and get coffee and then you got other stuff to take care of and then you're back and it's half a day later. That's life. <laughs> anyway, I want to add an option to write this disk image, which will be the ESP and the data partition. The whole disk image itself, since I save a file in the local ESP file system that says how big the disk image is, I don't have to query the size some other way. I can just get that and write that amount of data from whatever media and block IO protocol naming, you know, whatever the media is with that media ID for the disk image, I can get a block IO protocol for that, that media ID. I can read from the start of that, wherever the disk image is, which I just write it to the start of USB. So it's, you know, block zero to size of the image in blocks. I can read that to a buffer and I can write that from the buffer using write blocks for the block IO protocol onto another drive with another block IO with another media ID. So I can 
Just print the ones for full disks, we'll say, logical partition false, or a block I.O. with partition zero. I'll probably just maybe filter on logical partition false, should be equivalent for the full disk. And then have you just put in a number for zero to whatever for the media ID. And I'll make a buffer and read the disk image to that buffer and write it to that chosen, you know, disk with that media ID. Probably just print the sizes. We don't need all the info that's in the print block I.O. menu option. It's just I don't have a good way of getting a human readable name for the disk. You'll you'll have to know that this 250 gig thing is this SSD or this two terabyte thing is this hard drive. I mean, you'll you'll kind of have to know that. But other than that, because I don't want to mess with different pass through protocols for whatever the device may be to get manufacturer info. Yeah. Other than that, we'll we'll try and get that done and write a little file for installing. And then if you do that and print the boot options after you write to another disk and reboot. That'll be set to boot current, for example. So you can look at the boot options, you can write an install file and then reboot and just load the kernel automatically. So that's my goal. We'll see how far I get towards that, but that's what I'm trying to work on here. So write disk image to another disk. I'll just say write, uh, write to another disk. That's self-explanatory probably. I'll just say write, uh, I'll put what I put, I guess, right? Disk image to other disk. These all need to be capital. Is that proper title case? I don't know. That's that's probably fine. That's probably fine. I'll just put it underneath there like everything else. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll have the timer show up on there. Who knows? Right to another disk. Okay. Just return success, just do the print to go on stuff that I usually do, I'll just do that. My normal sort of function epilogue here. I'll just say go back, get key, and we'll clear the screen of course. Just to make sure it works as I like to do. So. Write disk image to other disk. Doesn't do anything, that's life. Okay, so I know I have another function to get all of the block IO partitions on the screen, so I have that. I'll probably just do something similar to that, to be honest with you. Get all of the block IO. We want to get the media ID for this one first, which I don't need to do this stuff. I actually have a function for that, but I'll copy this right now just to get everything. Actually, I don't need to do that, so copy these. Because so I'll have the media ID to check against. Compare it to others. Yeah, compare it to others and output. So I'm pretty sure I have get disk image media ID. That takes in a UN32. Okay. This media ID, or I'll call it disk image probably. Disk image media. ID. Okay. Does that return a bool or something? It returns status, but we'll assume that it's all right. So I guess I'll put if EFI error, wrap it and look kind of weird here, just in case. Three parentheses. Did not get this image media ID. Oh no, that would be bad. And we'll just return. Well, I can have status for this. Like I usually do. Yeah, we'll just do that. That was a backwards way of writing that, <laughs> these three lines of code, but that's fine. We'll do that and return the status else. We'll get other things like all of the stuff for block IO protocols, loop and print through the partition info I did for this, but we'll get, we'll get a handle buffer for all the block IO protocols. Keep track of each media ID as it changes. I won't print all the info, but I'll just go until we get everything here.
and we'll only print the ones for a full disk. So I won't print everything. Let's say full disk block IO protocol, you know, media info and in infos. <laughs> we'll just go with that. Media. So BIO GUID, set that up for block IO, number of handles and handle buffer. I got those up here. If we get them, we'll open the protocol. So there's open protocol by handle protocol. Another thing I learned actually related to this is that open protocol, the other actual things you can use that aren't just open by handle buffer or open by handle protocol, you can use git protocol. And if you make sure not to mess with them too much, <laughs> you don't have to actually call close protocol after opening it. So it is meant for a driver, but we can say we're a driver and, you know, skirt around the rules there. Say we can get a protocol interface from that handle and we are not required to close with close protocol. So the driver opens it and it will not be informed if it's uninstalled or reinstalled. So if something does a close protocol for this, for the block IO on this handle, that's not good. But if we're not doing that and you don't hot plug your disks while you're doing this, you should be okay. So we're gonna do that. And I don't remember if I have it sort of defined. Do I have, oh. Yeah, open protocol, get protocol, we'll do that. Alpha protocol was a game, which apparently was all right. Maybe a cult classic. One day I'll play it. Get protocol, there's tests to make sure it exists by child controller if you're doing it for something else, another controller handle. We're not doing a driver, we're not getting exclusive access, but get means you don't have to close it, which is nice. And I'll say could not get block IO protocol. We have the media ID that will change, which is fine. The last block is zero. I don't want to do that either. So I'll do that here. I probably only want to skip if the logical partition is false. So let's do this. If the last block is zero, if it's only one block, I guess it doesn't matter. I could keep it there. Maybe you have a small disk or something. We have to make sure the block's large enough to hold. Hmm. I'll keep that there. We, we'd want to make sure the block is large enough to hold uh, the whole disk image, which what's the large? I don't think there's any media with a block size larger than like 30 megs for a block. Maybe there is. I mean, there's huge pages. Maybe there's huge blocks, one gigabyte blocks. Somewhere in a data center, there's some magic like that, I'm sure. But not in my neck of the woods here. I'll keep it there and quit undoing, redoing, and being confusing. So let's say or... Another skip condition would be the logical logical partition being true, because if it's false, then it's for the whole disk, I believe. And that would be under media access, was that right? Yeah, block IO protocol. Logical partition, true if it's abstract partition structures, false. If it's the hardware device, that doesn't really say, does it? Logical partition is true if it's for a partition, only one, it will always be true. So if it only has one, it might not return everything. It's false if it's the entire device. If there's multiple partitions, firmware is responsible for adding device handles. I mean, judging based on this, if you only have one partition, maybe this isn't true, but I'm going to assume we're doing an MBR or GPT partition disk to begin with, which means it should always be false for the whole disk. Maybe I shouldn't assume that if you have a brand new thing and you want to use it, this might not work, but oh well. If logical partition is not false, so if it's uh yes, then I don't really want to do this. Or well, that's a Boolean, isn't it? So I don't have to Go off of that. Logical partition, yes, is a Boolean. Okay. Let's say block IOs for the, I'll put the whole disk. Not a 
logical partition. Okay, so we don't have to close here. We just have to continue because we don't have to close protocol from using git for the open call. Otherwise, we'll go through and I will print. I'll print removable present. It should be present. I guess if it's not present, I don't want to do that. I'm not sure why it would be returned. We'll say or. I don't want to try writing to something that isn't available, in other words. Or not present. So I'll put only care about partition disks above one block in size, block IO protocols for the whole disk, and media that is currently present. So I don't have to worry about those. Read only. Probably don't want to do read only because we need to be able to write to it. <laughs> really paring down the use cases here. I'll just put this in a list here. Media that is currently present and media that can be written to. Okay. Right, caching doesn't really matter here. Block size, last block, aligned LBA, logical per fiscal, transfer link granularity. I mean, we don't need to know that. IO alignment, we don't really need to know. Logical per physical, we can use for writing, but the user, do they care? Probably not. So we need to know removable. It's not a logical, not read only, not write cache. Okay, we'll do these, and I'll probably print the size as well. And a certain amount of bytes. So I'll put U and then this many megabytes. Well, I'll probably, I'll just put it here. Yeah, I'll just do that. So the size would be, <clears throat> the size would be however big it's reported to be. So we would take that from what? We have the block size in the last block. So probably last block multiplied by the block size would be my guess. The last block on the device. The number of addressable sectors and then the size of the block. I think we would probably do that. So let's say size would be Yeah, size would be the last block <clears throat> multiplied by the block size. So that's in bytes. Then divide that by <clears throat> 1024 squared and 1024 cubed would be four gigabytes. Okay, and then, yeah, I can, it, and all of them are going to be for the entire disk, so I don't have to worry about that. Partition, I could print what type of partition is, but I'm just assuming we got the whole disk, so I don't need to worry about this stuff. And I'm not going to open partition info. And I don't need to close it because I used git protocol. And separating them, that's true, I'll add another new line there. So we'll see what that looks like, probably. Okay, disk image, that's true, not this mini, not this media ID, but disk image media ID. Another paren for that printf, there we go. Okay. That does not look like what I wanted. <laughs> Does not look like what I wanted, that's okay. Media ID is zero, removable, we don't have the info, size, blah, 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 bulk size. Block size is large, last block. 
So I'm not doing that correctly, obviously. These all start with use for 16-bit. Okay, so this doesn't work because why? Removable doesn't even print. Interesting. Maybe it is where I'm getting it, and I can't do open protocol like that. I should be able to, but maybe not. Figure I would be able to do that. Okay, I can test that, though. I handle protocol. If that doesn't make a difference, then that's fine. It does not. Okay. Could be how I'm printing. So I'm printing a regular S for that, which is a U16. That should be okay. I did change how printing works, so it might be broken now. <laughs> So that's just a string. I mean, that should be fine. I mean, I can even print dot one to only get one of those if that's breaking it. Block size is a 32-bit by default. That's okay. Last block is 64-bit, so we could print LLU for that. Lowest OBA as well. As well as for the size. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I guess I just broke it. Is it obvious? Where? I don't know. This printed S, which is interesting. Maybe my printing is broken. Okay, I gotta debug this and see <laughs> where I messed up very obviously. And I will, uh, I'll do that. It's always the really obvious things that you overlook. So what do I have right here? I have a comma, which means for this string. <laughs> the first argument it's going to take is this string, because C is awesome like that. It doesn't concatenate string literals unless you don't have a comma between them. That way all of this counts as one singular argument passed to printf, and then the rest. Ooh, don't want no commas, commas. Don't need no commas. C drives me crazy. Ooh, you can see the size printed out here, so that's good. That looks correct. It's 512 times that would be 5088. It needs one more. I guess that's zero-based indexing, which is why. It needs one more block, 512 bytes. So I would actually add one to that, most likely. So let's do plus one. So this will be... Let's do this. Git. Partition, disk, I'll just say size. Get disk size and bytes. Add one block for zero based indexing fun. Because it's fun, you gotta have fun with it. There we go, that's the right size. 37785600, or 36 megs, which is zero gigs. So if we had more than one, we'd have more stuff show up there. So let's say I do that. Trying to think of a good way to do that. I'm like, hmm, there's QEMU image, which I can make. Well, this is going to be a bunch of stuff, isn't it? I can make an image. Um, what is the easiest way to do that? Standard options, command, command options. There's a way to just make like a raw image, but I don't remember. Format is the disk image format, guessed automatically in most cases. Okay, I could just pass a size. Okay. File name is a disk image file name. So snapshot.name. Ported formats. It has raw in there somewhere, I'm sure. Okay. Let's do test HDD2, I guess. Format raw. I don't know if this will work. Maybe a comma. Format raw, size, I have 50 megs. 
Let's try using what you just did to actually write it correctly, you dummy. All right. Or I can look it up. Dash O options file name. Create, probably. DD. Oh, it can do DD for me. That's cool. Let's just do that. QEMU image. We'll do create. We'll do dash F raw. I don't need a backing file. I don't think I need dash U, dash O options. I don't know. File name, we'll do SHDD2 size, I'll say maybe 20 meg. Okay, there we go. So that would have test HDD2, which is going to be 20 megs. And we can add that as a drive here. I won't use that to boot from, hopefully. I guess we'll find out. So I run the shell and we have everything. We have a second disk that shows up now. It still says it's the same media ID, which is odd. I don't know how I would give it different media ID, but just as an example, if you have more than one thing here, you know, we, we get more than one that shows up. So you can choose one to write to. Um, this might be a special case with the emulator, because if you have two things that are for the full disk, you don't want to, if you write to one, it would technically write to the thing that contains both. So I don't think that would really come up much in, in real life use cases, but that's an example. Bad example, but an, an example. So, okay, I don't want to... Well, I can print two lines. I don't need another one for this one. Okay, but now that I have everything, assuming... I guess assuming it's printed on screen and it's okay, it can probably only print like three or four on screen, though. If you have a bunch of disks, this isn't great. I don't... Let's, let's say as an example, this is fine. So, let's... um, <laughs> Let's take in a number from the user for the media to write disk image to. We'll do that. So let's just say input media ID number to write to. We can print out what they write here. If we do get, I'll do get int. And I need a number for that int n. Okay. Say chosen media, which will print it out, right? Until they press escape, then it'll leave early. Or they press enter to enter it in, and it'll print out while they're typing it. Yes, okay. All right. So I'd want to get the ID for that again, probably. So let's say we have all the info there. Maybe I don't need last block and lowest OBA. I'm just thinking right here. I could just put like the size. <laughs> They don't really need everything there. They probably just need the size. That would make more sense. I mean, the block size doesn't matter to the user here. And, but I can use the other info in calculations. So what do I want to do? I want to use some info such as the block size for from and to disks. That might be all I need, depending, but we'll allocate a new buffer to hold a copy of the disk image. We'll read blocks from disk image media to buffer. And then we'll write blocks from the buffer to the chosen, chosen media disk. 
Okay, yeah, and then they'll go back on success and all that. Okay. So they were 32. Well, let's say block size. Say we have the from block size. If I want things to not assume 512 bytes per block, for example, some disks might not have that, but we'll have from and to. So the from block size, I would need to save the, uh, the media for this, probably. That would be good. So let's say we have disk image media or BIO, disk image BIO will say, and I'll save that. Although I don't know, sometimes on hardware, I feel like this stuff gets overwritten and I can't use multiple at once, but I might've been doing something bad in testing. So I'll try this first. I'll try to have multiple active it at one time. And if this does not work, then I'll go through loop until we hit the right media ID and then grab it and then write. So if I can have two block IOs active at once, I'm going to try that first. If not, then I'll go through this. I'll go through another loop and grab them individually for the read and write operations. But we'll see. So I'll have a, a disk image BIO and I'll have a chosen disk BIO, or I could just take them and save them as full structs. That might be all right. Then I don't have to worry about stuff in memory necessarily because this BIOP is going to change, so that probably would be better, yeah. So disk, disk image BIO, block IO, I'll, I'll grab like this. I'll just put that again here. And I'll do disk image BIO equals the data at the block IO protocol. Save for later. Okay, now the chosen one I do, <laughs> chosen one from a Kung Pao. No, the chosen one I do have to get again. So I actually will do this again because I got the int here. So let's see, I'll have to open them all again, which is life. If I do get protocol, that's okay. So we'll have if BIOP media, I guess I'll copy the error status again, just in case we can't do it multiple times. If the media ID is the chosen media. Okay, if it equals the chosen media, then we're good. So I will grab that and break. Chosen disk BIO, get the data there. Okay, so from block size is going to be the disk image BIO block size. And the two block size is gonna be the chosen disk BIO block size. So then we can get the size and blocks which might still be uint32. Uh, I can do uint ends. So let's get the, the disk image, which I need to get the size of the disk image actually. Get size of disk image from file. Cause this I have, well, I guess I still have it dependent on my own tool, which isn't good, but that's okay. I need a better way of doing this later like have you enter in the size if you don't want to do this, but I'm, I write a file to the local file system with my uh, my tool. It doesn't like that, does it? Do you mean lowercase d? You know I did. No member name block size, because it's media. Okay, unused variable, that's fine. So I write a file called dskimg.inf, which is not technically, not really an, an IMN, INF formatted file, but it has the size of the disk in bytes that we got earlier, right? So that is different from the media size that I'm printing here. Otherwise, I could use this, right? This, uh, this size calculation. But the media is going to be however big your actual disk is on hardware. It's not going to be the size of the disk image in this case. 
the actual disk image is going to be a lot smaller than your real disk, which might be like a terabyte hard drive or something. So I, I can't use this, right? But I can get it from the file, which will be the actual size. So I will do that. I could also print the disk image size, I guess, if I get that first. So let me do that before all of this, probably. Yeah, I'll do that. I mean, I could get it when I get the media ID, but no. Um, okay, so I don't have a a helper or anything to like open the local file system or get a file or anything like that. I don't think. I don't think I do. No, I don't have very much in there. So, okay. Well, I can take from read ESP. Yeah, I can take from here, I can get open volume, start at the root directory. We'll go from there right now. Open root directory via open volume. Gonna be a lot of stuff in this function, unfortunately. Open protocol, I'm gonna do, well, I'm gonna see if doing git protocol works here as well. So I don't have to close it, because I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm not going to close it explicitly if I don't open it explicitly, but we'll just get the instance that is on the loaded image. We can grab the simple file system, which I'll also see if it works by git protocol. Yeah, we get the root directory, we open the volume. Okay. I don't have cleanup. Yeah, that's. I don't need to close it, so that's fine. Just return status there. So I have a file protocol directory P. So what I can do is grab that with the file protocol. I can do open. I think just open. Given itself and a name and some other stuff. Uh, yeah, I called it root there. I might as well, I might as well name it root, that probably makes more sense here. Yeah, so I open a file, I can open a file at a relative path from root. I would need a new file to hold it though, so let's put that here. And then I'd give it a path, so let's give it... EFI, boot, disk, image. This is hard-coded, which isn't great. I can just open it for reading, that's fine. Could not open file, we'll say disk, image, INF. Okay, so if we have this file and it's open, I can read from it. So I'll do my string string nonsense that I've done before. And inside of this file, does it load? Well, it should load to a buffer, right? Oh, I could have done read ESP file to buffer. I forget what abstractions I've done. I'm pretty, I'm pretty dumb. All right, let's do that. <laughs> That'd be a lot better, wouldn't it? Why, why did I not already make a thing for this and think of it? Because I'm kind of dumb. All right. Let's do disk image. INF. Okay, could not read that file. This would be return you know, one or something. Okay, but then I can do this. I can get rid of the other stuff I had, being a dork. So I'm searching for size, disk size, what is it? 
is it's going to be my local file system here. Disk underscore size equal. Okay. Disk underscore size equals. Could not find disk image size. And disk image inf. Okay, so we read this file into a buffer. I need to free the buffer, most likely, with free something. Is it free pages? Is it free pool? It's probably free pool. Oh, that was just there. Yeah, free pool and allocated buffer. Okay. Let me just remember to do that. File name, file buffer. I probably needed to copy a void pointer for that. There we go. <laughs> okay, so we have this size, so I can increment string position plus equal the size of that, or the length of that, which is one, two, three, four, five. Well, I'll just do this. That's going to be 10. I have string length. I do have string length. Okay. Okay, and then I can transform that. So I do have A to I. So that will be this value. Okay, there we go, disk image size. That didn't take too long, just me messing up a little bit. And we'll free it when done. Okay, so why am I getting the disk image size? Well, I'm getting the block size for the from and to disk we're gonna write to, and if I need it, if I need to write in differing block sizes for each, I need to put the size of the disk image in terms of the block size for each device that I'm reading and writing from to be a little bit better and more portable and fix future bugs, hopefully. So from, I need the disk image in a from blocks or something. Let's say from blocks in this case, we'll just say disk image size. Um, hopefully it's a power of two, it should usually be. So I need the from block size uh, minus one divided by from block size, or is it plus? No, it is minus, yeah. Because if the block size is 4096, that'd be 95 over that. So that'd be the size in pages. So blocks would be for the block size. So it should be plus 511 over 512, which will get the disk image size in, in blocks. Maybe it's one over, but should be all right. And two block size would be two blocks. Okay, I'll just print that info out for a argument's sake. So say disk image from blocks or, well, that's fine. If I have the size, I can print the size as well. So if we have the disk image here, I'll save that after we print this. I'll do another check here. If the media ID equals the disk image media ID, then I'm going to print out the, the size for that. Which I could print out this thing here. So this would be on a single line, this would be on another line, and then this would be on its own here, in between all of them regardless. 
just in case. Yeah, which would be a separator between them. Okay. So this would be disk image instead of just size here. Be disk image size, right? Yep. Back up, okay. I'll just do that. Okay, all that to say, I want to print the disk image with the one that it's with the disk that it's on, so the user knows how big it is. Down here, we'll print the size for the disk image and blocks for each device, just for information. And this would be, of course, the from block size and the two block size. And the from blocks and the two blocks. So if I'm writing, if I'm writing to the disk image media itself, I would kind of overwrite itself and do nothing. And these would be the same, but we can technically do that. So let's see what happens so far if I do like zero for the disk image itself. All right, just had to press enter for that, which is fine. I could say and press enter maybe. From block size is 512, two is 512, those are the same, okay. That's in blocks, I guess that's not what I wanted in blocks, is it? So I need this. That's probably dividing the second one by that. So I probably need to wrap that in parentheses, order of operations style. And when we write a number, I need to print a new line. Okay, that looks better. Removable, no, size, disk image size. And put media to write to zero, from two, from two. Okay, that looks a little bit better. That one I'll add another line too. So that is the right calculation for that. There was something I was thinking of here, but I don't remember. I'll do and press enter for that. Oh, I wanted to do, let me do yes and no here. So if it's removable, no, you can say, oh, it's a USB. Removable, yes, you'll think, oh, it's more of a fixed hard drive here. Okay, let's allocate a buffer. Again, just copy someplace that I had it before. <laughs> so the buffer size is going to be the disk image size. So you might not be able to get a super huge uh, memory allocation here at once. I mean, you could use pages to get a 4KB aligned and all, but I'm assuming your disk image is gonna be less than like two gigs, <laughs> for example. We could chunk it out, right? We could allocate like a, a couple megs and then read and write a chunk at a time and calculate the offset, you know, however much we've written. Uh, to be really simple with it, I'm saying, okay, we can allocate, you know, a 36 meg buffer, that's all right. But if you if you use an image or files or things here that are multiple gigs, this might not work. This might not be good for you. So I would, you know, leave that up to your discretion to make a smaller buffer size and then, you know, write it in chunks instead of all at once. This is just a simple way to do it. And if your image is less than a few gigs or if you have a crap ton of RAM, then it shouldn't really be an issue. It's just something to keep in mind. It's still kind of a toy thing. I assume most operating systems are under a few gigs in size, so maybe not nowadays, but if they are, hopefully you have at least four to eight gigs of RAM and at least two of two gigs should be free for allocating. You know, I don't know. I'd, I'd probably redo this later off camera and make it like a somewhere between two and 16 meg buffer or even up to like a one gig buffer and just write in chunks if needed. But right now I'm gonna assume everything fits in memory and it's fine. So I have the size here. A buffer, we need a buffer. Let's say image buffer. And we'll pass that in. So when I call allocate pool, 
That uses the file buffer, which is a void pointer. Yep, okay. Uh, so my image buffer can be a void pointer, and we pass a double void, so the address of that. I'll just say if it errors, could not allocate memory for disk image. And clean up, well, we don't have to clean that up really. Okay, so we can read. We can read that thing. So I will have cleanup later for the buffer though. So I guess I can, I can do that here. Free pool on the image buffer. Okay, read blocks would be the disk image, BIO, which would be a, a struct, right? Yeah. So does block IO have direct access to that? I don't remember. Is it just read, maybe? I don't remember. It's read blocks. Do I not have read blocks? Have I not used that yet? That would be a good question. If I block read, yes. Yes, I do. On a block IO protocol, if I'm not looking at the media, or is that within the media? Oh, that's on the block IO protocol. Okay, yeah, I should be able to do that. Let's read blocks given the disk image. BIO. Does that take in a... This is a pointer. Maybe I do need a pointer for that. Well, I don't know if this will work. I'll pass in the address for itself, though. Can't believe I'm not using that anywhere. That's okay. Gotta learn new things every day, right? So what is the media ID? The disk image media ID? Or I guess I can grab it from the disk image block IO. I didn't need that. It's kind of redundant. That's okay. So the LBA I want to read from is going to be the first image, or well, the first block, first logical block from the disk image, whatever disk that's on. Because I'm assuming you wrote it to the start of the disk or the USB or whatever. So that'll start at LBA zero and go until LBA, the last one from from blocks in this case. <laughs> I guess zero based. It might be that minus one, but yeah. The buffer size is going to be the disk image size, the size of the buffer that we allocated for it. And then the buffer it's going to put it in is going to be the image buffer. Maybe I'll just put a, a writing thing. I'll say reading percent bytes to buffer. Let's just say that, or blocks. I'll do blocks, yeah. That'll be okay. We'll do from blocks. Then I'll have a writing. If I can print there, there we go. Writing blocks from buffer to disk. From disk image, disk to buffer, writing blocks from buffer, chosen disk. Okay. Assuming this worked, which it probably won't because it's me, and stuff never works. That's why we have to check these things. So if we had a status, I'll say could not read, could not read blocks from disk image media to buffer. Okay. And then writing blocks will be very similar to this. It'll just be write instead, and instead of the disk image BIO, it'll be the chosen chosen disk block IO. And it'll be write blocks using the chosen disk block IO, the chosen 
this that shows a media rather shows a media id yep that the user entered starting at the first ova so i'm writing to the start of that drive assuming it's the media for the full drive which those are the only ones we should show and able to be selected i guess if they select a bad one we don't want to do that what if they select one that's not valid that's fair <laughs> i might have to check that i'll do that if chosen disk bio well if they can't find it i guess I'll do this found equals true. Let's have a found here. If you enter in a bad number. Let's say could not find media with ID, whatever you entered. And whatever you entered would be chosen media. Okay, so if, if there's only like two disks and you put like five, I mean, that's not going to work, right? So I'll prevent that. Okay, if I want to write the blocks, we'll write these blocks from the buffer to the disk. Disk image size from the image buffer, okay. And we'll see if it wrote all right. And if it did not work, we'll say could not write blocks from buffer to chosen disk. Yeah, that's fine. Two chosen disk. Then clean up, we'll free, and be on our way. So not too bad, I'm just scatterbrained and go all over. But we'll see how that works out. An emulation, it's not really going to matter that much. Need to make sure I write U16s there for all of these. Um, zero. Forgot. That has the status there, okay. Unused label, that's fine. So I need to make sure that stuff looks all right. In emulation, this isn't really going to matter if we write like a two. Could not find media ID. All right, so that'll work. So if I do zero, reading blocks from disk image to buffer, it never continues. So I know I have an issue because it doesn't finish, all right? Which isn't great. Um, so why is that? It's probably a good reason for that. The buffer size has to be in blocks, I know that. When I do read and write, the disk image size should be in. Is the buffer size the number of blocks or the number of bytes uh, divisible by blocks? That I don't remember. The size in bytes must be a multiple of the block size, okay. I mean, I could make sure it's that way and say, uh, say from blocks times from block size, I mean, that would, I guess that'd be a, a more portable way to do it. But it did not, it did not like this, so I probably need to hold, because I knew this was an issue before, I probably need to hold uh, pointers to those and not do straight structs. Let's see, I'll convert it to pointers in a second. because it never finishes reading, and it should go on immediately. Okay, so let's get pointers and not structs, which I have up here. Okay, the uh, stuff is probably meant to work with pointers anyway, I guess that's fine. I can just change that or I didn't get a correct value here. I should have, because I set it equal, and if it's equal, I do that, and this is after that point, yeah. Okay, I'll just equal, equal that there. And the chosen disk BIO, we won't be reference. we'll just give it, we'll get it there. I am using git protocol, so I get it and then I leave. So maybe the previous one that I got wasn't valid, I don't know. Those are pointers, which means, yes, these will have to change. CN.
Okay, hopefully that's all. It's not. Because I have to write the file. Uh, remove the, yep, yeah, remove the ampersand, that's what it was telling me. If I would just pay attention, then stuff would go a lot smoother, wouldn't it? Okay. There we go. Okay, so I have to use the pointers. <laughs> I can't use the structs because that's bad for some reason. I don't, whatever. If I use pointers there, it does work because it reads, writes, and any key to go back. Okay, cool. So I'll put this, I'll say disk image written to chosen disk. I'll say reboot and choose new boot option, I suppose. When, well, when able, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> What's a good, a good thing to, uh, to print for that? And then it'll say press any key to go back. Okay. Reboot and choose new boot option when able. All right, we'll do that. Not great English, but that should work. I mean, I'll test it on hardware and show it here, I suppose. I guess I could have hooked up my phone and done that, but I'll just show a video. If it doesn't work, then look forward to more debugging in this video. But if it does work, then I'll show that and probably end it because I got to go for stuff. But if that works, then this should be good. And I'll just write a file, which will be pretty short. That doesn't take much time at all, especially if I make some abstractions. But I'll write a file at the start of the next one, and we'll go from there. So yeah, let me see if this works right quick, and uh, I'll have an outro. <laughs> so assuming it works, uh, the next one I'll write a file, just an install.dat, which will be, instead of reading an ESP file to buffer, I'll just have a little function that'll just say like, create file or touch file or something, and it'll make an empty file and return a success or not. So I'll just, I'll do what I did before, which is go up until we get the, the root from the system file, the simple file system protocol for the loaded image. We'll, we'll grab, you know, a root pointer to the root ESP directory. And we can do open with flags to create and create for, um, I think it's open, create, read and write. We'll just do th that combination to make the file and just leave if that was successful because that would make the file in the file system for a given path. So I'll just have a function take in a path for the ESP. It'll take in like this as a path and it'll write an empty file. Then I'll add a little check within EFI main to see if that file exists, which I may or may not make another little function abstraction for that, but we can just check if the file exists, maybe with read ESP file to buffer. And if it fails, don't worry about it. And if it succeeds, just free the return buffer. That would probably be simple. And then if the file does exist, I'm just going to call load kernel instead of loading the menu. And inside of the load kernel function, I think there's like one point where I do get key. I'll just comment that out or I'll, I'll skip that getting a key if we, if we have installed. So I might have like a global Boolean for installed yes or no. And if that's true, then I'll just skip getting a key and call load kernel and it'll just load the kernel whenever you boot. So if, if this stuff works for writing to a disk, you can boot from that disk, you can install the file, and then when you reboot, it'll automatically load the kernel. And then we'll say this is actually somewhat of a bootloader at this point, right? So I'll probably have another thing. Let's put down at the end. Uh, well, I did it right here, right? This, this sort of optional thing here. I can write the file when writing to another disk. Let's say from that menu option. So I'll probably do that after I make sure that it works reading and checking and auto loading the kernel. I'll just add the code to write the file. I'll add a call to write the file within this option that we just did. So that when you reboot before 
it uh, writes the disk image, it'll write this file so that when you reboot, it'll just load the kernel. I guess I can do that. That would be a little simpler than having to have an option to write it, but I'll have both in case you want to do one or the other. I was checked on boot and the kernel would auto load for new drive for the first time. Yes. So let's say call function to write empty install.dat file when writing disk image to another disk. Create empty file first so that it exists on the local ESP file system for the disk image being written. Okay, so that'll work. So I'll, I'm going to do that on the next one. It should be not as long as two hours, <laughs> but I'll try to research the fonts and maybe add that on after that point uh, to have a longer video. We'll see. But that's something I'll get to on the next one. Thank you for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll see you then, and cheers.